Hello, Facebook family. Um, I have decided to do this video. It has been weighing very heavily on my heart um, and on my mind as well. And it was something that I wanted to say early on, but there were so many emotions and so much pressure um, for me to go with a popular opinion about who George Floyd was. Um, and sometimes it can be difficult when there are just so many external pressures to say what you believe. And this was an instance where I felt like my silence would have been better in the beginning, but the more that I think about it, I realize that we are being sold a lot of lies and at the detriment to the black community, at the detriment to the white community, and at the detriment to America as a whole. So I um, want to come out and say uh, that I do not support George Floyd and the media depiction of him as a martyr for black America. I'm going to explain why and I hope that some of you guys will understand where I'm coming from. Um, I have spent a considerable amount of time reading a lot um, of black authors that I think are some of the most brilliant black Americans breathing. Um, Walter Williams, Shelby Steele, Thomas Sowell, and I recently came across something that was an idea that was planted into my head by Shelby Steele and it has been something that I cannot um, forget. It is something that will stick with me for the rest of my life. And it is something that I hope for the black Americans that are watching will stick with you for the rest of your life. Shelby Steele said that the black community is unique from other communities. Um, our, our culture is unique from other communities um, because we are the only community that caters to the bottom denominator of our society. Now, let me explain what that means. Um, it means to say that not every black American is a criminal, not every black American is committing crimes, but we are unique in that we are the only people that fight and scream and demand support and justice for the people in our community that are up to no good. You would be hard pressed to find, um, you know, a Jewish person who has spent five stints in prison, uh, who commits a crime and dies while committing a crime, and that the Jewish people champion and demand justice for. You will be hard pressed to find this in white America. You'll be hard pressed to find this even in Latino America. Uh, if there is a person that is spent multiple times in prison, you are not going to see a bunch of Latinos coming out um, demanding justice for this person, even if, and I want to be very clear, what I'm saying is not any defense for Derek Chauvin. I hope Derek Chauvin gets the justice that, um, that he deserves to be um, you know, implemented upon him and that the family um, of George Floyd deserves justice for the way that he, that he died. Um, but I also am not going to accept the narrative that this is the best the black community has to offer. For whatever reason it has become fashionable over the last uh, five or six years for us to turn criminals into heroes overnight. Um, and it is something that I find to be despicable and it's something that I refuse to stand by any longer and I am not going to play a part in it no matter how much pressure comes from black liberals and black conservatives as, as some token of people wanting you to believe that this is the only way you can be black is you have to say this was wrong and that this, you know, this person was amazing. I won't do that. Uh, George Floyd was not an amazing person. Um, and as soon as this video hit the internet, I did just basic searches. Uh, everyone jumped on it and call and, and was looking at the police officer and everyone agrees that the police officer was wrong and the police officer has been arrested. Um, so that is not the reason I'm not discussing that is because that is not something that has been misconstrued in the media. Uh, he has been turned into the devil that he is. And there is no reason for us to harp on that any longer because white Americans are not uplifting Derek Chauvin as a victim or pretending that he's an amazing human being. But George Floyd is being uplifted as an amazing human being. Um, and uh, for those of you who have not yet seen the clips and did not pursue or wait for more clips to come out, uh, first and foremost, George Floyd at the time of his arrest was high on fentanyl and he was high on methamphetamine. Uh, this came back in both of his autopsy reports. Uh, if you pursue the 911 transcript, you can see the person describing somebody who is out of their mind high, um, and which is what made the person fearful because he tried to, you know, to, uh, use a, a, a bill that I guess was a fake bill to purchase something and then he was outside acting weird and they in their police call said that this person was obviously distorted and on drugs. Uh, when he is put into handcuffs and is put against the wall, a baggie of what looks to be like uh, cocaine or uh, some, it's, it's white, it's a white baggie that he drops onto the floor that you can see in an image. If you look up the clip, the media is refusing to circulate it. You can find it on Twitter. If you, if 
you use DuckDuckGo and look up um, George Floyd Baggy, uh, you can watch the clip yourself with your own eyes. Uh, he had drugs on him at the time of his arrest. Um, now, barring all of that, nobody thinks that he should have died during this arrest, but what I find despicable to be is that everyone is pretending that this man lived a heroic lifestyle when he didn't, and I want to talk about what his lifestyle was um, leading up to this moment and why I refuse to accept the narrative that this person is is a martyr or, or should be lifted up in the black community and that we should be buying t-shirts uh, with his name on it, okay? So here we have, first and foremost, let's start from the bottom of his record. And by the way, I am not saying that if you have a record, you don't deserve a second chance. I think people get arrested um, and some people can serve time in prison. And I believe in second chances, but I do draw the line when it comes to uh, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth, and ninth chances. 1998, he spent uh, 10 months in prison for theft with a firearm. Uh, that was the first prison stint that I could find on him. In 2002, he spent eight months in prison for a cocaine offense. In 2004, just two years later, he spent another 10 months in prison for a cocaine offense. In 2005, he spent another 10 months in prison for having um, less than one gram of cocaine on him again. Um, in 2007, and this was the biggest instant um, uh, that I had that made me realize this was a horrible human being that I would, I, I am not going to pretend was a good person. In 2005, a woman who was pregnant uh, received a knock at the door um, and she went to the door and the person pretended to be someone that worked um, for the water department. So she opened her door and quickly realized that the person at her door did not work for the water department and attempted to slam it. Um, at the moment that she was attempting to slam it, a Ford pulled up and another five men jumped out of the car and one one of which was George Floyd, came up to the door and they forced their way inside to her home, uh, inside of her home. Um, mind you, this woman is pregnant. At that point, uh, George Floyd took out a gun and pressed it to her stomach. Um, uh, uh, she was screaming, begging for her life, and, uh, and he put her inside of her living room and instructed one of his criminal friends that was with him uh, to watch her and to make sure she didn't leave the living room. So he was playing guard while they ransacked her home looking for drugs and money. They did not find um, drugs. They ended up taking, I believe, her wallet and her cell phone. Fortunately for her, her neighbor um, observed what was going on and caught the license plate of the people as they pulled off and called 911. And when 911 was able to, um, they were able to track down the car uh, of which uh, George Floyd was the driver. Um, and they arrested him. And two years later, he was sentenced to five years in prison um, for that instance. Um, now, you can say uh, the media is portraying it like he was just getting his life together after you know being released in 2014 following that incident. Uh, he was just getting his life together and, and moved and was gonna start afresh. I'd like to believe all of those things and there's a gap and he never got in trouble for five years until this incident when the police were called on him again. Um, uh, but you are defying common sense to believe that this person suddenly became an exemplary character but happened to be high on fentanyl and methamphetamine um, and, and trying to use a bill, um, a fake bill to purchase something. And so in my opinion, uh, George Floyd was a criminal. <laughs> he was a criminal. And just because he was a criminal doesn't mean he deserved to die at the knee of a police officer. But it does mean that I am not going to play a part of the broken black culture that always wants to martyr criminals, who wants to pretend they were these upstanding human beings that just wanted to help society, uh, that just wanted to reach out um, and, and uplift society. And we're, he has a rap sheet that is long, that is dangerous. He was an example of a violent criminal his entire life. Okay, up until the very last moment. Now, again, I want to be clear. This is not a defense for Derek Chauvin. No one in, that I have spoken to, no one in the news is defending Derek Chauvin. He is getting what he has coming to him. Okay, great. But why are we pretending that this criminal should be upheld as a citizen, uh, a, 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 of a, as a martyr in black America? A martyr for a fake narrative, by the way. Police brutality, racially motivated police brutality is a myth. 
okay? So let's get into that. Not only are we using this death, right, and allowing it to cause these riots and protests, pretending this was some upstanding citizen in the black community who was tackled down um, and, and killed for no reason, right? Not only are we allowing it to inspire riots, riots in which black people are dying, in which actual upstanding black citizens are dying. Case in point, I'm sure you guys have all now seen uh, David, uh, the, the sheriff that just was shot and killed uh, because he was trying to protect uh, a a pawn shop please look him up if you haven't seen it i'm blanking on his last name his first name is david um who was shot and killed for trying to protect a pawn shop from looters an upstanding citizen an actual head of a police he was the head of a police his entire life 77 years old did everything right right so we now have to kill upstanding black citizens because a non-upstanding black citizen a career black criminal died now did he deserve to die in that manner no I can't say it enough. No, he didn't deserve to die in that manner. But I will be damned if the rest of us upstanding black citizens have to suffer because of this incident that rarely ever happens in America. So here are some numbers for you people that are still believing that police brutality is a real, racially motivated police brutality is a real thing. First and foremost, okay, you have a 25% higher chance as a violent white criminal of dying at the hands of a police officer than you do as a black criminal. Last year, a total of nine unarmed black, black men were killed by police officers and 19 white men were killed by police officers. For those of you that aren't good at mathematics, right? You might be thinking, oh, but Candace, white people represent 60% of the population and black people represent just 13% of the population. It doesn't matter what percentage of the population you represent. It matters what percentage of the violent criminal community you represent. And unfortunately, black community create uh, um, commits a disproportionate amount of crimes compared to the white community. Let me tell you, 6% of the population, right? Black men, 6% of the population account for 44% of all murders in this country, according to 2018 statistics. That is what you call a gap. And yet white people, white people who represent 60% of the population, we represent 13, uh, black men are 6%, uh, only, uh, represent 50% of all the murders, right? That makes no sense. That, that makes no sense. A six point variation in a community where we are, we are extreme minorities. We commit 50% of all violent offenses evenly split and we're only 13% of the population, okay? So we have a lot more encounters with police officers. And don't say the police officers are coming around because we're black. I'm talking about violent criminals. I'm talking about murder, 44% of murders, okay? You want to talk about real statistics? The, the, the police officers have way more to be fearful of in the black community than the other way around, okay? We commit, on average, a, a police officer is 18 and a half times more likely to be killed by a black person than the other way around, okay? So this entire narrative is complete smoke and mirrors. It's all made up. It's just election fodder. It's white versus black because it's an election year, not because black Americans are suffering at the hands of police officers more than white Americans. Do some police officers do the wrong thing? Yes. I don't think there's anybody in the world who has not encountered a police officer and thought this person is an absolute jerk who is power tripping, whether you are black or white. We know they exist. And we know they're always going to exist, by the way, because they're human beings. And sometimes human beings suck. In fact, if you want to attack a community for, for you know, accidental slayings or brutality, did you know that doctors accidentally kill a quarter of a million people every year because of mistakes? Do you know that there's, there's been doctors that have been arrested for being serial killers that just were killing people because they wanted to? Do we protest and boycott doctors? Do we assume all doctors are horrible human beings because some doctors are? Or do we realize that society is not perfectible? People suck in every profession. It is no excuse to paint society with a broad brush. It is certainly no excuse to accept a Democrat narrative, okay, that black people are being disproportionately hunted down by police officers because of the color of their skin. You want to know the best way to avoid not being not being brutalized by a police officer is to not is to is to limit the amount of encounters you need to have with them, especially when it comes to violent crimes. Okay, I am not going to stand for this continual bottom feeding narrative of us martyring people that have had five, six, seven stints in prison and then pretending they were upstanding heroes to our community. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. Excuse my language. It's absolute bullshit, and I'm tired of it. 
I'm tired of having to play pretend. I'm tired of sitting here and being called a coon or an Uncle Tom because I won't play this bottom feeding game with you. If you want to hang up posters of criminals on your wall and talk about them as your martyrs, do it. Do it. You can do it. Kobe Bryant was my idol, okay? I'll keep a photo, I'll keep a photo of Kobe Bryant. You can keep one of George Floyd and pretend he was an upstanding human being that just once or twice put a gun across a pregnant woman's belly. Could you imagine that woman right now? That black woman, by the way, right? Watching everybody pretend this person was an upstanding human being who just at the age of 42 after, and five prison stints was going to get his life together. I mean, it's embarrassing. We are embarrassing in that regard, right? We, this is why we have a cycle and a toxic culture because nobody wants to tell the truth in black America. It's so easy to be a victim. It's so easy to ask black, white people to bow down and apologize and do all these things for us. It's crap. It's crap. It's a lie. It's a farce. Our biggest problem is us, okay? It's why we don't talk about it when black on black crime happens. It's why we don't talk about it when 40, 40 black people are killed in one weekend during Memorial Weekend um, in Chicago. We don't want to talk about any of that stuff. We don't want to talk about Baltimore. We don't want to talk about New Jersey. We don't want to talk about any of these places where black people are being slaughtered by other blacks because that would, that would mean that we had to be personally accountable, right? That would mean personal responsibility. We don't do personal responsibility in our community. We don't do it. We blame white people, right? We only point a camera to white people when they do something, even though we do it at a way higher rate to ourselves, right? We celebrate our drug dealers. We're the only community, right, that would ever create hashtags to free people from prison because they committed crimes, like free Meek Mill, free this rapper, free this rapper. How hard is it to not spend multiple times in prison? How difficult is that? Is that too hard for us? Is, I mean, is that way too high of a mountain for us to scale to do the right thing to be upstanding citizens? That is the call to action that I have for Black America with Blexit. Like, why do we keep fulfilling this narrative? What do you think the perception of us, by the way, is on the outside? You ever look at the comments? You ever go into like an anonymous blog and see what people say? Oh, just black people being black people. I see those racist comments. Oh, just black people got a riot. Black people got to be black people. You know how they are. Oh, just black people being ignorant. That, that is the perception. When people get to be anonymous and talk about us, that's what they think about us, right? They think that... We are the kind of people that will forever uphold criminals as the martyrs of our society, that we will never take account for the things that we do wrong, right? That we don't have it within us to educate ourselves to get ahead. And that for those of us that actually do it, well, we get called coons, right? You got Condoleezza Rice, she's a coon. Larry Elder, he's a coon. Dr. Ben Carson, brain surgeon, first ever to perform uh, the surgery of splitting uh, twins that are connected by the head. He's a coon, right? What a loser he is. What a stupid guy he is. Kanye West says he he's not going to be told to do it because of the color of his skin. He's a coon. He's lost. He's in the sunken place, the sunken place. That's where we all are, right? Because we demand more and we will get more out of this society because we will be, a, we, we're going to get ahead, right? That's what's going to happen. We're going to get ahead. Black conservatives get ahead because we don't subscribe to this narrative. Because you're not going to catch me outside trying to grab a TV pretending that it's because a martyr named George Floyd got killed. Okay? I'm a big believer that no matter what color you are, you do stupid things, you win stupid prizes. Okay? We have to do better. We have to teach our kids better. Or we're not going to get ahead. Right? Anyways, this is just a rant because I have been feeling super, super, super annoyed at these depictions in society i i have you know i have no apologies here to make uh george george floyd is not my martyr